about prophet nu al islam now the example of ibrahim al islam uh, example of ibrahim al islam has been mentioned so how he was like uh, examples are presented in quran to understand in a better manner and to learn isn't it so and remember ibrahim when he said to his people worship allah and have taqwa of him that is better for you if you know in the previous ayah we learn about nuh al islam now ibrahim al islam is mentioned he was of those prophet who were given determination ul al azm he began uh, with his family telling them to worship and fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone either you will call people to what you are doing or else they will invite you to what they are doing many times uh, we are told to do such and such we know that we cannot compromise when it comes to religion even though ibrahim al islam was the only one on tauhid he did not feel intimidated by his people he started calling his people he is confident in what he believes in he is confident and wants it for others as well as well so here is ibrahim al islam preaching to his people yeah allah tell us how his servants messenger and close friends ibrahim al islam like you know he was uh, on islamic monotheism call his people to worship allah alone with no partners or associate to fear him alone to seek provision from him alone with no partners or associate to give thanks to allah alone and he is the one to whom thanks should be given for the blessings which none can bestow but ibrahim al islam said to his people o budullah wa taquhu worship allah have taqwa of him meaning worship him and fear him alone with all sincerity zalikum khairul lakum in kuntum ta'lamun that is better for you if you know so if you do that you will attain good in this world and the next world and you will prevent evil from yourself in this world and the hereafter then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that the idols which they were worship they not able to do any harm or any good and tells them you made up names for them and call them gods but they are created by just like you and uh, ibn abbas said it was a uh, view of the others mujahid and all you invent falsehood means you carve idols which do not have the power to provide you and what the who in the lahi rizqa to seek from allah your provision so here you alone we worship and you alone be asked for help we learn in surah al fatiha and he is saying rabbi ibni li indaka baitan fil jannah my lord build for me a home in paradise so that's how our belief is so here believing in oneness is most important right so here in following ayah you worship besides allah only idols and you only invent falsehood verily those whom you worship besides allah have no power to give you provision to seek from Allah your provision and worship him and be grateful to him and to you will be brought back so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one who is raza and we all have to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he asked his people to show servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the master this is in our best interest denying Allah will only harm us we cannot ignore his plan allah's plan allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and we will be held to his uh, laws we cannot quit being allah subhanahu wa ta'ala servants even if we are tired we would not be able there are two types of servitude ibadul qawmi all of the creation are allah subhanahu wa ta'ala servants human animals every creature is owned by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full authority over us he allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can cause as live and die isn't it ibadul khasa sharia to show servitude to allah 
by worshipping him alone ibadah of worship by choice ibrahim al islam tell his people to show servitude to allah subhanahu wa taala when something is built and designed for a specific purpose and it is used for the purpose then it is best we were created to worship allah subhanahu wa taala wa ma khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa liya'budun when we choose to worship him alone and we dedicated our lives to allah alone we are fulfilling our purpose a person can only worship allah when allah subhanahu wa taala has ill knowledge of oneself knowledge of allah subhanahu wa taala knowledge of the reality of the world with knowledge we can make bad choices isn't it so here in this uh, the following aya it says you worship besides allah idols so they they were worshiping the idols so inna ma ta'budu min dunillahi awsana awsana is used for idols wa takhluqu ifka and you all created a falsehood inna allazina ta'buduna indeed those you all worship min dunillahi other than allah la yamlikuna like they do not possess lakum for you risk any provision wabtagu so you all see in the allah from allah risk the provision wabuduhu washkuru lahu ilayhi turjaun wabuduhu you all worship him alone who allah subhanahu wa taala washkuruhu you all be grateful lahu to him ilayhi to him turjaun you will be written awsan is the plural of person that which is worship beside allah person could be a star statue animal about which people think it has divine quality so they worship it these idols that you are being worship are just statues if is a lie falsehood these idols are not gods they do not have reality it is a lie that you have produced all of these idols do not possess the power to provide you you are the one who perfume clothe feed and protect the idols can idol move and do themselves no nothing if you want provision ask allah subhanahu wa taala his raza who is sole provider of risk some people worship for worldly provision they worship more for the purpose of getting more risk there is nothing wrong with this but it should not be our primary intention there is nothing wrong when you go for hajj if you partake in trade however it should not be one's primary intention it's allowed but that shouldn't be primary intention many people think about reciting learning quran when we want something from allah subhanahu wa taala ibrahim al islam did his job and conveyed the message clearly now it is the responsibility of the nation to fulfill their obligation risk should be sought from allah subhanahu wa taala the one who owns something is the one who can give it Allah subhanahu wa taala is the only one who has malik razaq we must not seek provision from others so you only worship beside allah idols you produce a falsehood indeed those you worship besides allah do not possess any power or provision so seek from allah subhanahu wa taala and worship him and be grateful to him and you will be given i number 18 if you deny the nations before you you have denied and the duty of the messenger is only to convey plainly like you know wa in tukazibu faqad kazzaba umam min qablikum wa ma ala rasuli illa balaghul mubin so what is the duty of a messenger illa balaghul mubin just to convey the clear message so this ayah could be a statement of ibrahim alayhi salam or a statement addressing the people of makkah so if you o people of ibrahim or makkah <coughs> any place know that if you deny many other nations have denied you are not causing any harm to allah subhanahu wa taala with your deny umam is the plural of umma prophet of allah subhanahu wa taala ibrahim al islam or muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did their job their responsibility is to convey the message now now it is up to the nation as to fulfill the responsibility we cannot force something to do something they don't want to do 
and balagul mubin means clear notification and if you people deny the message already nations before you have denied there is not upon messenger except the duty of clear notification so here we understand one has to convey the message if somebody is not listening just nation like they have to convey so ibrahim al islam said what is in the section he established proof against them and the resurrection will indeed come to pass because at the like uh, they were believing in idol worship so avalam yaro kaifa yukti is saying like you know have they not considered how allah subhanahu wa taala begins creation and then repeats it indeed that for allah is very easy so here uh, he is asking you know avalam yaro do they not see kaifa yukti how he initiates allahu allah a uh, khalaq uh, the creation summa then yuidu he repeats it's la ata yuidu yuidu is from out is to return in zalika alallahi yaseer it's very easy no allah subhanahu wa taala created first insan adam al islam he was not only the only human created generation after generation have been created even a fruit like a strawberry has so many seeds so many strawberries can be produced from one strawberry allah subhanahu wa taala is one who brought into existence then he repeats the creation we cannot even guess the number one man dies but humans do not like instinct like life does not stop with the death of one person or one plant dies or one tree dies it continues the cycle yes yeah, seer from yusra easy it is easy for allah subhanahu wa taala to repeat the creation lesson what we learn we must reflect on our state who is making this creation and life continues in this planet if allah subhanahu wa taala repeats it before your eyes do you think it is difficult to resurrect the people but it's not so allah made it once so so they not uh, how allah originates the creation then repeats it verily really, that is easy for allah so here from ayah number 19 to 23 say travel in the land see how he originates the creation then allah subhanahu wa taala will bring forth the creation of here after verily really, allah is able to do all things he punishes whom he wills and shows mercy to whom he wills and to him you will be returned and you cannot escape in the earth or in the heaven and besides allah you have neither any protector or help and those who disbelieve in aya of allah and meeting with him such have no hope of my mercy for such there is a painful torment so the evidence for life after death allah tell us that ibrahim al islam showed them the proof life after death which they denied in their souls for allah subhanahu wa taala created them after they had been nothing at all and then they came into existence and became people who could hear and see the one who originated this is able to repeat it it is very easy for allah then he taught them to contemplate the visible signs of horizon and the thing that allah has created the heaven stars planets moving stationary earth with its plain mountain its valleys so whatever the things even like you know a particular kind of recipe first time it's difficult other time it's easy so the and uh, everything allah created trees rivers fruits oceans all of that indicate that these are the themselves created things that there must be a creator of course who does and he choose whom merely safe to a thing be and it allah creates so see then Uh, not how allah originates the creation then repeats it verily that is easy for allah al awalam yaro kayfa yubdi allah qalqa summa yuidu inna zalika lillah yaseer this ayah is like wa huwa allazi yubdi qalqa summa yuidu wa huwa ahwanu alayhi and he is who originate the create creation and he will repeat it and this is easier for him this is in surah number 30 ayah number 27 then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says قل سير في الأرض فانظر كيف بدا قلق ثم الله ينشي نشاء الآخرة. See travel in the land. Now Allah is saying, okay, travel in the land. See how He originates the creation. Then Allah سبحانه وتعالى will bring for the creation of the hereafter. So here, you know, 
Sara is hero is to travel. The command is being made to travel through the land and see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began the creation. Observe the animal, plants, seeds, if they were their own creators. They would not ever be living. Imagine baby turtles. When they come out of their shells, they go straight away to the water. They survive the birds that could eat them. Some of them uh, do get eaten up, while some of them do not make it. There are so many dangers surrounding the turtles. What are the surrounding us? We must look at the life cycle. Reflect on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khudra. Because, you know, we see on the animal planet or the documentary on the animals, how they survive. So here, yun shi'u from noon shin hamza, insha, to cause something to grow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will produce the creation that is final when on the day of judgment. When something dies, it doesn't become uh, ex, uh, end. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect the dead. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is over all things competent. All power uh, rests with him. You know, day of resurrection, not in this world. Nobody is going to come back in this world. Like this is talking about the day of resurrection, day of judgment. And here, so say uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa travel through the land and observe how he began the creation. Then Allah will produce the final creation. Indeed, Allah over all things is competent. And you azibu mayyasha wa yarhamu mayyasha wa ilayhi tuqlabun. So, how can we doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power? Tuqlabun is from qalb. To turn over. He punish whom he wills and have mercy upon whom he wills. To him you will be returned. So he punish whom he wills and shows mercy whom he wills. He is the ruler who is in control. Who does as he wishes and judges as he wants. And there is none who can put back his judgment. None can question him about what he does. Rather it is they who will question and his power to create and to command and whatever he decide is fair and just for his sovereign and who cannot be unjust in the slightest according to a hadith recorded by Sunan. So if Allah will to punish the dweller of his heavens and his earth, he would do while he would not be unjust. And Allah said, You azibu mayyasha wa yarhamu mayyasha wa ilayhi tukhlabun. He punish whom he wills and shows mercy to whom he wills. And to Allah you will be returned. Then on the day of resurrection. And you cannot escape on the earth or in the heaven. No one in the heaven or earth can flee from him. For he is the subduer who is above his servants and everything fear him. He is indeed to him while he is the one who is independent of all is. Means besides Allah... You have neither any protector nor any helper. Those who disbelieve in the ayah of Allah or meeting with him. Those who disbelieve in the signs of Allah, they denied in the resurrection. So here we see, وَأُولَيْكَ لَهُمْ azabun ali, And for such, there is a painful punishment. So here what we see, like وَمَا antum. بِمُعْجِزِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ وَمَا لَكُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مِن وَلْيُمْ وَلَا نَسِيرِ You will not cause failure to Allah upon earth or in the heaven. And you have not other than Allah any protector or any helper. So you, O oh human beings, can never cause failure to Allah. When we are alive and when we die, die we cannot run away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is our owner. Qalik, Malik and Mudabbir. We do not have any friend or helper besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no wali protecting God and no one can help us. Nasir is like you know one who helps. And Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَةِ اللَّهِ وَالْلِقَائِ أُولَائِكَ يَئِسُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ وَأُولَائِكَ لَهُمْ عَزَابٌ عَلِيمٌ And those who disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's signs and deny in his meeting those who despair of Allah's mercy will never achieve Allah's mercy. So their disbelief shows that they don't want Allah's mercy. Ya isu to despair. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divided his mercy into hundred parts. And one part he has given to the world. It is because of that mercy that creatures have affection for one another. Even those who don't believe have air to breathe. 
have fun in life. Ninety-nine parts of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mercy are reserved for the hereafter. If one mercy is so much, just imagine how merciful is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's mercy isn't he depriving himself of his akira? None is to be blamed but him. But if you are not availing that opportunity, because Allah is giving opportunity again and again. So here Allah says, "Fama kana jawaba kumi illa an qalu uqtuluhu aw harrihuhu fa anjahu Allah min al nar inna fi zalika la ayat li kumi yuminun." Now they are in anger. They are trying some plan, and what they are saying, response of this people, kill him or burn him. They were so overcome by their anger, their bias, their love of idolatry that they want to get rid of Ibrahim al Islam. The worst way of getting rid of uh, someone is burning, burning alive. So Allah subhanahu wa taala save Ibrahim al Islam from fire. They had built a huge fire. It was so huge that he had to be launched into it by a catapult. And in Surah Al-Safat, Ayah number ninety-seven and ninety-eight, we learn the fire became coolness and safety for Ibrahim al-Islam because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala saved him. They could not cause him to die because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had decided that Ibrahim al-Islam was not to die. Nobody can harm us until and unless Allah allows. If the entire nation gathered to benefit you, they would not benefit you unless Allah had already decreed. And likewise, if they had gathered to harm you, they would not be able to unless Allah had decreed it. So we must stop fearing people. We must understand that it is Allah who decide our decree. Ibrahim al Islam was never harsh with his father. He was very sincere to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He wanted the best for the people. We cannot play the role of victim. Ibrahim al Islam father addressed Ibrahim al Islam harshly, rudely. And however, Ibrahim al Islam always responded respectfully and with the salam. So we learn. So nothing was uh, the answer of people except they said, "Kill him or burn him." Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said from the fire, "Verily, in this are indeed signs for people who believe." So the response of Ibrahim al Islam people and how Allah controlled the fire. So Allah tell us how Ibrahim al Islam people stubbornly and arrogantly disbelieve, how they resist the truth with falsehood. After Ibrahim al Islam address them with the words of clear guidance, illa and call uktuluhu aw harihu, they started saying, except that they said kill him or burn him. So this was because proof had clear been uh, clearly been established against them. So they resorted to using their power and strength. So they said, build for him a building and throwing him into the blazing fire. So they plotted a plot against him, but we made them the lowest. Call Ibn Lahu Bunyana, fa alquhu fil jahim, fa radu bihi kaidan, fa jalnahum asfali. So they spent a long time gathering a huge amount of fire. They built a fence around. Then they set it blaze until its uh, flame reached up to the sky. No great to fire had ever been there. Then they went to Ibrahim al Islam, seized him, and put him into catapult. Then they threw him into the fire, but Allah made it cool and safe for him. And after spending several days in it, he emerged unscathed. Nothing harmed him. For this reason and others, Allah made him. An imam for mankind, and he offered himself to the most merciful. He offered his body to the flames. He offered his son for a sacrifice. He gave his wealth to care for his guest. For all of this reason, he is beloved by the followers of our religion. But anjahu Allahu minanna, and then Allah saved him from the fire. Means he rescued him from it by making it cool and safe for him. Inna fi zalika li ayati li kumi yuminu. Really, in these are indeed signs for a people who believe. So Ibrahim al Islam explained to his people that idols are incapable of doing anything. Wa qala inna ma taqasum min dunillahi ausanan. 
So an Ibrahim al-Islam said, you have taken idols instead of Allah. The love between you is only in the life of this world. So Ibrahim al-Islam was rebuking his people for the evil deed of the worshipping idols and telling them, you have taken this as gods. You come together to worship them so that there is friendship and love among you in the world. Summa yomal qiyama. But on the day of resurrection, the situation will be the opposite. And his love and friendship will turn into hatred and enmity. Yakfuru baadukum bi baad and you shall deny each other. Meaning you will denounce one another and deny whatever has been uh, between you. Vayal anu baaduhum baada and curse each other. Means the followers uh, which they are following right now, they will be cursing each other. Leaders and the leaders will cause, uh, curse their followers. Means, Kullama daqalat ummadun lanata ukhtuha. Every time a new nation enters the fire, it curse its sister nation that went before. This mentioned in Surah number 7 and number 37. So, uh, friends on the day will be forced one uh, to another except those who have taqwa. So, Aqilau yawma is in baaduhum li baadin adu illa al muttaqin so the friendship should be based on the taqwa otherwise it won't be last long that will be enemies to you and allah says summa yawm al qiyama yakfuru baadukum bi baadi wa yal ana wa yal anu baadukum baadan wa ma baakum annar but on the day of resurrection you shall deny each other and curse each other and your abode will be hellfire meaning your ultimate destiny after all accounts have been settled will be fire of hell and you will have no one to help you or save you from the punishment of Allah this will be the state of disbelievers and it will be entirely different matter so what we learn here like you know all the idols and all these things uh, they tried all these things but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Ibrahim al-Islam because Ibrahim al-Islam was on Islamic monotheism. So the people of Ibrahim al-Islam have idol worship and they did wrong but Allah saved him. So if we are doing anything for the sake of Allah, Allah will definitely protect you. And here talking about in ayah number 26 and 27 about Lut al-Islam. So let Lut believe him. He said, I will emigrate for the sake of my Rabb. Verily, he is almighty and all wise. And we bestowed on him Isaac and Yaqub. And we ordinate among his offspring prophethood and the book. And we granted him his reward in this world. And verily in the hereafter, he is an, indeed among the righteous. Now here continues with the Ibrahim al-Islam. Now the Lut al-Islam also. So, فَآمَنَ لَهُ لُوتٍ وَقَالَ إِنِّي مُحَاجِرٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ So, Lut al-Islam believed in Ibrahim al-Islam. So, he was one uh, individual out of nation and he is another. So, Ibrahim al-Islam uh, says that he will do hijrah. He will leave his nation to his Lord and he will go somewhere else. And he did this hijrah for the sake of Allah. And we learn in the following ayah, وَحَبْنَا لَهُ إِسَاكَ وَيَاكُبُ وَجَالْنَا فِي سُرِّيَةِ نَبُوَّةَ وَالْكِتَابَ وَآتَيْنَاهُ أَجَرَهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةَ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ So here, how one after another, like you know, father and son mentioned, who were righteous. So Prophet ﷺ, when his own people made him leave Makkah, went to Medina. Did he not have good neighbors and supporters there? When you leave something for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you better. So definitely, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has a better. Like, you know, everybody loved him because they were anxiously waiting in Medina. So here, Allah is consoling the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa describing previous nations, especially about Ibrahim al-Islam and the Lut al-Islam. So in this world, Ibra Ibrahim al-Islam got good praise. During the Hajj, the rituals re, uh, revolve around Ibrahim al-Islam and his family. Prophet said that you are on the religion of Ibrahim. 
Uh, Surah Al Nahal, Ayah number one twenty two. We learn that we gave him good in this world and the hereafter. He will be among the salihin righteous. This is the case with every believer. When a person shows uh, their sincerity to Allah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will not leave him empty-handed. For the believers, the real reward is in the hereafter. He will be providing risk in this life. due to his obedience do not get scared of the people you have to have the fear of allah so here now in the nation of lut al islam there is a particular kind of uh, you know disease which was not before that about lut al islam and now these days it it is very common regarding that walutan is qala li qaumi innakum la ta'tuna fahishata ma sabaqakum biha min ahad min al alami so what they were doing they were approaching to the men instead of women and this causes lot of problems so the people of lut are committing such an act that none others has and mentioned lut when he said to his people indeed you commit such immorality as one has proceeded you with from among the worlds like you know here how you are doing this wrong thing as i mentioned th this is like you know when you mention such kind of thing you you feel like a kariha you 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 dislike a kind of thing so and remember when lut said to his people you commit immoral uh, sin and which uh, none has proceeded you in committing in all creatures and i number 29 and 30 really you practice sodomy with men and rob the wayfarer and practice al munkar in your meeting like they are doing openly one sin is like you know you are doing in private they were doing publicly but his people gave no answer except they said bring allah's torment like you know they were in fun they were enjoying and they are saying okay bring the torment if you are uh, truthful he said my lord give me victory over the people who are corrupt and here in this we going to learn the dua of um, lut al islam when he asked allah subhanahu wa taala so the preaching of lut al islam what happened between him and his people allah tell us that his prophet lut denounced his people for the evil deed and their immoral action in having uh, like you know they literally do intercourse with the men a deed which none of the sons of adam al islam have ever ever did and these days people talk about this and they said it it is possible it is possible but it's not allowed it's not halal it's completely forbidden and haram so they were disbelieving in allah doing such kind of thing not only that they were robbing they farce and they would lie in you know and wait they would wait on the roads kill the people loot their possessions this is the thing but tatuna fi nadikum munkar like you know practice munkar in meetings this means that in gatherings they say wrong things they do practice the wrong things and they obviously promoting wrong things you know one thing you do in private it doesn't promote but when you do it publicly that becomes norm it's like a normal thing everybody says oh he is doing she is doing and that's how this thing going on that which is called homosexuality that is immoral that's a wrong thing and that is a fahisha so here what was the crime of people of lut they approach men for the sexual desire instead of women they cut the path of travelers making it difficult for them and third thing they commit evil in their meeting instead of encouraging others to do good and the people of lut fulfill their desire on the same gender nida is to call in their meeting they call to evil same sex relation just because it is possible but doesn't make it permissible it is possible to get rich by cheating others but it is not halal we must not follow and do what is possible we must do what is permissible so the people of lut obstructed the way of travel like in a hissy and tangible way by blocking the roads highways robbery looting in the manvi sense creating hurdles for them in the way of allah for example normalizing sense frowning looking down at those who practice their deen the people of lut made fun for him saying that he was very pure the people of lut openly committing sins in their gathering it is 
one crime commit fahisha in private commit prab in public is different because you promote publicly and that is wrong and incorrect so here in the end lut al islam made the dua and and allah answered that dua what was that dua rabbin surni ala ala al qaum al mufsidin my lord support me against the corrupt people so allah help them accept the wife of lut al islam so what we learn even though somebody is trying to put you in the fire or somebody is doing wrong it means it's right but allah will help you you should ask help from only allah subhanahu wa taala jazakallah khairan kaseera